Hey guys, Rich here. Welcome back to the RC Informer YouTube channel. And today's video is going to be a full install of the KMRC Models Universal Center Burner. Brand new burner to hit the market. I already did a introduction of this and show you sort of the detail of it. It's pretty simple though. And uh, that's on the RC Informer YouTube channel. I will put a link to the upper right on the upper right hand corner of this screen. You can click on and go watch that where I really go into the detail of this and showing you all the features of it. Today, we're gonna to be putting it in the FMS for fall and see how that goes down, any modifications, changes, or anything I have to do, any pitfalls or caveats we're gonna talk about in this video. So here's what you get in the package. It's a very simple system and here's pretty much what you get. You get the afterburner unit, you get two zip ties to zip tie it to your motor and uh, you get an instruction manual as well. It's really a simple setup. Just a quick key features uh, review of this thing. First of all, it's universal. It'll fit any size in runner motor with two zip ties. So it's lightweight. Uh, the, the factory version is going to be about 16 and a half grams. It's inexpensive, super easy to install again with two zip ties, and we're going to talk about that. Uh, and it has a small footprint. It's so tiny in the back here, it doesn't block the cooling holes. It's short lengthwise, so less trimming is needed for bifurcated ducts. Um, and um, it's easy to calibrate. In fact, it has a calibration mode that's cool that you can actually set the lower limit of it and where you want it to go. So it has that mode, which is really nice. And um, there's no interference with the uh, speed controller because when you plug this into your throttle wire, okay, your lead, for your, uh, what it has is it has your, your ground and it has your signal wire and it doesn't draw any power okay, off of your, your uh, receiver so it doesn't interfere with your ESC. It only takes power from 12 volt um, um, from your, your balance lead. So now just a quick, quick review of the instructions because they give you this little, little Chinese manual here that you can kind of go over and you can kind of see what this, uh, what this thing is all about. Essentially this is it folks right here. We're going to run zip tires through the back of the motor after we line up the, the wires from the burner with the motor, make them parallel. Then we're going to go ahead and you can see the bottom right here. That's my radio on. You can see right here where they show a sample version of this thing. You can use a little bit of contact cement to glue it in place if you want, but essentially taking those zip ties, attaching it to the back of the motor, and then once they're zip tied in place, you can go ahead and cut the ends off if you want to. Again, it's a universal fit thing, so if you don't want to really snip those off you probably could leave them there in the event you think you're going to use them in a larger motor later but you can just snip them off to match and we'll probably do that here in this video and then you go and you plug everything in to your receiver uh, and uh, into your balance lead and then you go ahead and you do the calibration process which we'll talk about one key feature that is different about my version that uh, the factory version will have is that mine is all a one-piece solder deal so when I run this through the fuselage I've got a wire, I've got to run all of this stuff from the back of the plane through the, through the front of it. As you can see here, where is the production version of this? It's going to have uh, two tabs, I think, on both sides of here. We'll you'll be able to plug these wires in and out. So you'll have a very small wire to feed through there. And I'm just going to kind of struggle with mine and get it in there. But just so you know, the production version of this thing um, is going to have those uh, connectors on both ends just to make installing it a le little easier. So with that being said, Let's get to it. Now before I do a full install on this center burner and run the wires from the back to the front, install it all on the motor, first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that this thing is actually going to work. So uh, what I'm going to do is just get everything plugged in first. Now normally what you do is you take your uh, throttle wire here, you know, for your, uh, uh, you know, for your throttle line and you plug it in via a Y harness. So you would pull your throttle wire out of your receiver, plug a Y harness in, put your throttle back into the Y harness, and then put this into that uh, other end of the Y harness. But because I'm this Rafal, I happen to have a larger receiver in here. I have an extra open channel. I'm just going to leave my throttle wire, ESC wire alone and let it have its own, you know, continue the way it is with a dedicated wire going in without breaking up possibly the connection with a Y harness. I'm just going to plug this right into my auxiliary too because I happen to have it open already. So, and then what I'm going to do with my radio, which I'll show you right here, I'm going to go into my mix and I pre-mix this so I don't have to go into too much uh, so you guys can get the gist of this. All I did was I used mix one, made throttle my master, okay, right here, and I made um, my, uh, my, you can see my throttle is my master, and I made the uh, slave channel 
as aux two. Then I went ahead and mixed the rates where I need to, 100% each. I put the offset at 100. And when you watch your system monitor, you can see that as I advance the throttle uh, right here, you can see both of these right here, aux two and throttle, they go up and they go down together. So now in order to make that work where they're both at 100% at the top, right in the middle, they're about 50, you wanna make sure they stay parallel if you use you know, if you use this, this method. I had to go into my offset, and I don't know why, but I put my offset at 100, put everything at 100, and you can see now I am getting both of those, throttle and aux two, moving in synchronicity together, which is actually perfect. Make sure you don't have a throttle cut on, because if you have a throttle cut on, what's gonna happen is, is uh, you're only gonna get your aux two, and that's the beauty of it, is you can test your burner now, without the throttle right here actually working. So that's the beauty of it is, is you can run your, your and do your calibration and all that stuff uh, if you're using a set, uh, an open channel like this. You can do your calibration and everything without having your, your, you know, your, uh, um, your uh, power on. So you're not you know, launching your airplane across the room. So anyway, once you have that mix set up, it's time to plug it in and see if everything's working. Now with the battery just kind of loosely mounted here, I'm going to go and plug this in and let the calibration process of my, uh, my flight stabilizer go through and it's going to get it all powered up and uh, everything should be good to go. Flight controls are running through the check. So everything is good to go and now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug my afterburner line in, okay, which uh, is just the balance lead and that's where the only power source comes from for this. My throttle's at an idle and also my safety is on, my throttle cut is on. I'll plug it in and boom, there we go. We have a nice light, uh, you know, just kind of a, a, a low power emission here. And then as I advance the throttle, um, you can see it'll start to get brighter. Now, this is programmable, okay? Now you don't wanna go full throttle for too long when there's no airflow over this because you can melt it. Remember, this is a, uh, a nylon resin, but it just has, instead of glass or something around here, it just has a very lightweight, clear heat shrink tube around it. So there is a calibration process for this that you can actually set this. And what you do is you put your throttle at full throttle and you plug in your balance. When everything's plugged in, you plug in your balance wire and then you bring your throttle all the way down to the spot where you want your afterburner to start coming on. And what I did is I brought mine down to sort of this first notch because I like my afterburner to start increasing a little earlier. Some guys like it at half, some guys like it higher, but you notice that I calibrated mine. So as I increase this, once I get to around there, it starts getting a little brighter and then it gets brighter and brighter and brighter through the whole range. So I get a change of, of, of brightness from wherever I want it to start all the way up to the top, so it's a progressive. And again, I like mine coming on a little sooner, so that's, that's just how I set mine up. So I'll probably put the instructions at the end to show you guys that, and we may run through it at the end. But you can see right here, we have it at a very low, just power setting, and that's how this is gonna be at idle. Future versions may be a little bit different, but you can see even at idle, we're gonna have a nice sort of low glow to this thing, which I think is cool, and it has a nice candle type flicker to it. And again, as you increase power, it will flicker and it will increase and you can see it has a really, really, really nice look to it. So now let's get this thing installed in the airplane. The first step is to get your fan hatch cover and fan off of here. And I already removed the two screws. There's only two, you know, three millimeter metric screws here. Your fan setup might be a little different, but that's it. You just remove the hatch um, and then get your fan out. There's also four screws, two there and two there, and I already removed those and pulled those out just to sort of speed up the time. I think we all know how to, how to use screws. And then we're gonna go ahead and maneuver this in such a way that we can get our center burner mounted easily on the back of our motor. Actually, mounting the burner is uh, extremely simple. First thing we're just gonna do is just get our orientation right and which way we wanna mount this. And we just really wanna have the wires lined up the exit wires here lined up with these exit wires so they're gonna they're gonna sort of parallel each other as we get them on so i'm gonna probably mount it in uh probably this direction right here we'll see actually maybe i'll just do it this way and what you have to do is just pick two of these you know little kind of um, um staters or standoffs whatever you want to call them um to uh to attach this thing to so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my 
zip ties, and you can see one, I already curved here, okay? And to do that, because you don't want to damage your wires inside the motor, you can see you got wires in there. Chances of damaging with a zip tie are probably pretty slim, but just to be on the safe side, you want to curve the end so when you put them in, you're essentially just doing this with it. You put that in there, and you can reach in, you can grab some uh, um, uh, needle nose pliers if you can't get it in there, but that's really all you're gonna do is just zip tie it like that. Now to put that curve in there, pretty simple. Um, all you do is just kind of roll it with your finger. Just kind of put it there, this technique. I don't know if people do this or whatever, but I've kind of been doing this for many, many, many decades, but you can roll this thing between your index finger and your thumb and get yourself a curve started. So you're almost not even gonna need the needle nose you know, sort of if you do this this right. So we're gonna go ahead and start feeding these in. The first one's just gonna go in kind of right here, as y'all can see, and I'm just gonna sort of curve it around carefully, and I'm gonna be looking down there to see that thing coming out of there. And hopefully I did it right where, you know, it's kind of curving up. If not, I can put a little more bend in it in the right place that I would need it. And then let me start that in again. And we'll put that kind of down in there sort of push it down, really shouldn't have much to run into. What will happen is, is this will naturally want to point itself up. Now if it's not coming up, it's not coming out of there, here's where you grab your needle nose very carefully, just kind of reach down, just reach down in there, grab it, and then just sort of pull it through. And you can actually, depending on how tight these wires are, because these wires can make the zip tie kind of tight, you just carefully feed it in while you're pulling out on this end and that will actually make it, make it go in there uh, much easier. So there can be a little bit of a tug of war going on here a little bit, pushing one in, pulling the other out when you've got sort of some tight motor wires. The other side is just gonna go in there, you know, probably pretty darn simple, and I'm just gonna go the other way with that one. And you can see if you do it right, you probably don't even need any, you know, any, uh, any needle nose pliers at all. So once you have this on there, all we're gonna do is just put our burner right in the center. And if you want to, you can put a little bit of foam tack, but honestly, I'm not gonna bother. I'm just gonna go without the glue altogether. And then we're gonna go ahead and secure these in position. See if I can get that down in there, just to get it sort of just generally secure there. Let's see, I'm gonna pull this down into place. And, uh, and that's it, we're gonna tighten it. And again, this one's a little harder to move just because it's near that wire and that wire's got a little grip on it. And again, the primary objective is to get this thing centered, but also get it so you're not damaging your wires down there. You gotta be real careful with that. You shouldn't have a problem with that. That shouldn't really be an issue. And then I'm just gonna kind of tighten this on down. Now, as we get in here on the close-up, let me see if I can zoom in on this a little better. You just wanna get this in such a way that you can see it's not blocking any of your holes here. Let me back out my zoom a little bit. We'll flip it around this way, and you can see it's not, it's not blocking those holes at all either. So you got a nice, nice exhaust coming out of there without any blockage going on. And then once we get these fully secured and tight in place, I'm gonna cut the zip ties off. With my zip ties fully secure, I'm gonna give this a little bit of a tug, and you can see that this thing is not moving at all. It's on there pretty secure. Even without any glue, it doesn't move. And I think part of the key to that is the fact that right here, there is a ramp, there's a curved surface that goes from this part of the nylon to the actual tab that sticks out. And you can see these zip ties are at a bit of an angle. So if you tighten them proportionally, you'll be able to get this um, whole uh, kind of unit centered in with this. And what's happening is, is because of those curved angles right there and right there, the curved corners, these two being at an angle keeps this thing nice and centered and it doesn't want to move anywhere. So now that we have this thing totally secured in place, I'm going to go ahead and I am just going to cut these things off. So this is my first time really securing one of these in place. Flush cutters are probably the way to go um, because it will make it nice and flush. There'll be nothing really sharp in there. And then just for the record, we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut this off the way that it was intended to be via the instructions. So I'm just going to snap that one off and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to snap this one off. And that is it, folks. We've got our, um, our, uh, our, our KMRC model uh, center burner kind of fully installed. You can see it's low profile. 
It doesn't block any of the cooling and uh, it's just sort of a nice unit in there. So what I'm going to do is re-angle my motor and now we're going to kind of handle with as I insert this, it's probably going to run into the bifurcation and I'm going to need to do a little trimming in there with my particular uh, installation in this Rafal. Um, and let's take a closer look at what that looks like. If you're installing this uh, center burner inside a plane like the Rafal where you have a bifurcated duct, meaning that you have a single ducting that goes into two exhaust pipes, you're going to have a sort of a V-notched area here that splits the two and this is where it bifurcates into two. So if you have that problem, really as soon as you start putting this fan in, you're going to bump into this V-notch right there and you're going to have to start trimming it away little by little. I used a hobby knife just to get in there and sort of cut it away. I will try my best to zoom down there to show you guys sort of what that looks like. But you basically have to cut a notch out of there so it will fit. Now this thing can get a little bit hot in flight even though it's got you know pretty good cooling you know from the from the fan spinning there so um, but what it'll look like is it'll look like something like this and I'll zoom in there where you can kind of see where that kind of uh, the end of that thing comes in. Now you got to clear enough away you see from the top and the bottom I cleared enough away so it's not making any contact with the foam. This was the V-notch, the area where it bifurcates that I, I removed from there. And you guys can do this any way you want. You can do it as sort of neater and as clean and kind of as I did as a cutaway, or kind of just do a rough job and sort of just leave it blunt. And what I did is I took a little sanding bar with some sandpaper and I went in here without the, without, of course, without the LEDs in there, of course. And I went ahead and I sanded very carefully to recreate the bifurcation. So there actually is a, if you can look in there, I did it on this side too. I went in there to kind of taper the end to sort of streamline it so, you know, that thing is not, uh, that light is not sitting there blunt up against, you know, a, um, a, 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 a blunt area. But also the real reason I did it mostly was to, so you could see the light. By kind of splitting that up, it, it kind of lets you see the light and by sanding it and putting it back to sort of a, you know, what you would call sort of a V-notched, you know, bifurcation, I just recreated this. After I cut it off, it was relatively flat. I made a re-V-notch a little farther back and now that thing, as you can see, it fits in there pretty nicely. The next step is to set up your wires and uh, get your whole wire rig here ready to kind of run all the way through to the front of the fuselage. And what I did was is I took a go get em wire, which you can see is already run through here. And what I did is it's just a piece of piano wire or metal wire or whatever you happen to have around. And I ran it through the front in the cockpit uh, section, ran it all the way through the back along the speed controller, which you'll see uh, is right down in there. And I have that wire ready to attach these wires too. Now also to sort of prep this whole thing, um, what I'm also doing is, is right here you can see I'm running the wires uh, with a piece of tape. I ran one piece of tape along here because you want this, these wires to just sort of follow your speed control wires uh, and so forth. So also something you guys will not probably have to be dealing with too is, is that this has a rather large kind of um, just plug here for your uh, balance wire that I have to run all the way through there and that's kind of big to get through there. Um, this part's pretty small and you guys are going to have a connector here. So you're going to be able to pop that off and have a very small connector just to run through there. And then you can reconnect the PC board at the, at the other end. But for what I'm doing, you can see here, I already removed one of these because I think it's going to be hard. The Rafal's pretty tight area of electronics and wires back there. So it's, it's what I did is I went ahead and removed one of these leads already. And uh, remember where they go. Red's in the middle and then the other one's here. I took a picture of this before I started removing this, but there's actually a little release catch sort of mechanism in there, a tab that you can just sort of push on and when you do that you can pull this out. All these tabs are like that just so you guys know you can see the little release just for your uh, just for your knowledge base there um, you can see as I look at that it has a little tab right there right on the end there so and if it's not locking in you can pull that tab kind of back out and then pop it back into place so by doing this is just going to make it easier for me to kind of tape these to that piano wire right here tape all this on here and just sort of feed that through rather than having this whole honking thing go through but again you guys aren't going to have that problem because you got tabs on here so let me go ahead and secure this and i'll start pulling these uh wires through now what i did is i grabbed a piece of a blender and tape and I'm going to run it right along here and you want to use a fairly large piece you don't want anything that's going to catch 
and I'm going to run these right along there. Hopefully that'll be all I need. You just got to get them through there once, and then once they're through, you're you're pretty much uh, good to go. Actually, that already released on there, didn't it? I'm going to go ahead and throw another piece on, uh, but you can get the idea of once you secure that on there, then we should be able to pull this through nicely. Now, with everything taped in position, I'm going to go ahead. I've got my hand over here on the other side where the uh, <laughs> where the battery compartment area is, and I'm pulling on that wire as I'm sort of feeding this through, and we'll see if it goes through, you know, nicely without really, uh, hopefully, without snagging on anything. You can see here through the other end, everything came through actually fairly smoothly. You just got to find a good kind of hole down in there to get this through. And as we pull this uh, through, you see it comes in actually pretty nicely. And uh, all we got to do is check on the other end and make sure the wires, you know, are not uh, are not kind of wound up or makes it basically just kind of paralleling the wires coming through. With my wires completely run through, I'll just take sort of the excess wire, just sort of tuck it back in here. There's sort of a hornet's nest, rat's nest, whatever you want to call it, a wires back in here. And so I just kind of tuck them in there. Most of my 6S packs won't even go all the way down in there, but there's sort of a, just a ton of wires back in there and just sort of tuck it back in there. But we'll take a look at what I did to secure all the wires in here. Pretty simple stuff. You know, here's our balance lead that supplies power, you know, to the afterburner. I took a little bit of Velcro and I just Velcroed this PC board on here because we're going to be able to observe that light for calibration right there. And then I just ran my wire right there into my AUX2 or your Y harness, however you have it set up. And then I just removed this tape here, here, and here, and just ran that wire all the way across. Just put the tape back on. I used the old tape. And so it's nice and in, in position. So beauty about this thing is, is this is such a low profile. Even the, the circuit board is a very tiny, tiny board. And um, it's just, I didn't have any problem even running it through the, the back of here because it was so thin. This might have been a challenge to get through, but you guys won't have, to, won't have to really worry about that. Now, as we look at the back of this thing, we'll be able to get a good idea here of how this fits in. You can see if I, if I zoom way down in there, let's see, right along the edge of the wire. So I'll kind of try to zoom down in there. You can see that green and blue wire running right alongside my main wires. You just want to make sure they all go down there. Nothing's being pinched or anything. And you can see uh, my bifurcation that I cut into. And you can see how right down in there, everything fits in there real nice. And then we can even look down the tailpipe. Let's see if I can get a good view of that to show you what that looks like. You can see I secured the motor back with the four screws and uh, just to get it in position so everything's in place. And you can check through your tailpipe here, and we should be able to see down in there that you see I've got adequate clearance around both sides. Let me see if I can zoom in on this. We got adequate clearance around both sides, okay, and the back of that burner, because we don't want that burner really touching the foam. Just give it enough clearance where you can kind of, you know, be comfortable, you know, with the amount of space between the two, because remember, foam is a petroleum product, so it, it burns pretty good, so just keep the heat off of it, and you can see I got plenty of space there. You can also see the green and blue, you know, power wire and how that thing is secured in place. You can also see the ramp and the extended bifurcation that I put in there with the sandpaper. And again, I did that for a little bit of airflow, but mostly to sort of unblock a little bit the view of the light, so the light can actually be, you know, uh, the LEDs can actually be seen through there better, and it it, it does streamline it uh, just a bit. So let's get the uh, hatch cover back on. Now with everything where it needs to be minus the hatch cover of course so we can kind of take a look in there and see what it's like. I've got the airplane totally powered up and uh, ready to go. I have the uh, throttle kill on my airplane set up so it doesn't fly off the table. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug in my balance lead and you can see our light comes on uh, on our uh, afterburner board. Uh, just to indicate that it's on, it's powered, and, and it's calibrated. So it should, we should be getting a pretty good light here. Let's see, out of the back of this, it should be set up to go. And let's see what we got. So, uh, yeah, there we go. We got our, uh, our afterburner lit up pretty nicely. I'm kind of leaning here on the edge of the table holding this up. And uh, it, it's important to note that, again, this thing lights up um, even at idle. And it just has a nice kind of cool flicker to it. And because I have mine on a Y harness, I can actually run my throttle, okay, without causing, um, without causing the fan to come on. So you can see here as I increase my throttle, I run it up. About quarter throttle, I start getting my afterburner picking up and 
and so forth. So you don't want to run it again. You don't want to run it too bright without any cooling running through it, without the fan running on it. But at idle, it's so low. It's such a nice kind of low candle burn that it doesn't even, uh, you know, it doesn't hardly uh, uh, make any heat at all. So, but you can also see in there, I've got plenty of space and that's what you want to make sure. Make sure you got enough space down in there so we are not, you know, burning away uh, at any of our, uh, you know, foam. We're not melting any of the foam in there and so forth. And let's look at the other side see how that looks yeah but a nice nice uh very nice install on this thing it went in there pretty well with the exception of having to cut the bifurcation and if you don't have a bifurcated duct you're not going to have to do any of this all you're going to do is just put this burner in something like an f-16 you know and uh you're going to be uh, you're going to be good to go so let me flip this plane upside down and we'll look on the inside of it and uh see if we can get down in there and see what that what that looks like down there and it's just sitting there pulsing away again we got nice clearance in there i'll see if i can zoom in there just show you all kind of what that looks like and my modified sort of bifurcated duct down in there and it seems to work out uh fairly well so let's get the hatch cover on and we'll go ahead and we will wrap this up lastly before we go let me show you guys what a throttle calibration looks like now to do this you either need to have your throw or your afterburner line on a separate channel like I do and I'm going to activate my um, throttle kill so I'm still as you can see um, through the uh, through the uh, uh, monitor uh, um, uh, screen that I am only running my auxiliary notice my throttle is not working if I activate that I'm going to get both throttle and aux too so I'm going to disable that so I just have my full throttle range running up to 100 and then all the way down to 100 and that will serve as full calibration range. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my throttle all the way up to start this off. I'm going to put my radio down and I'm going to go ahead and this is how we're going to calibrate it. It's similar to how you throw, calibrate an ESC. I'm going to plug this in and what we're going to see is a flashing light right there. You're going to let it flash three or four times as you can see it right there. And as it's flashing, I'm going to move my throttle down to the place where I want the afterburner to come on, which is right about that line. And I'm going to stop and I'm going to leave it there. And when I leave it there for a few seconds, that light goes steady. And then now that is where I have set my brightness to start increasing. So at this throttle position every time, that's where my brightness of my afterburner is going to start getting brighter every time. Okay, guys, that pretty much uh, sums it up. I went ahead and I put the, uh, the lower hatch cover back on, and you can see we get to some pretty, uh, pretty extreme brightness. Again, I calibrated mine, so it comes on at about, for me anyway, about a quarter throttle. And at idle here, you can see it just has that really, really nice flicker. If you guys are interested in one of these, you know, KMRC Models, a new company, I'll put the links in the description below that you guys can uh, go and get one of these. Uh, and again, you can't really beat uh, kind of the features of this thing. It's a universal fit, so it fits pretty much, you know, any size motor. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's super lightweight, again, just over 16 ounces. It's inexpensive, super easy to install with zip ties, has a small footprint side to side and front to back, minimal trimming if you need a bifurcated duct, you know, uh, set up like I have here. It has calibration and it's very easy to do. So you can have that burner come on whatever you want. This one is set up so it, it has just a very, very low glow like you can see here where it's at idle where it barely generates any heat. So it's on all the time. Future models may be different. They're probably gonna be adding colors and all kinds of stuff. Um, but uh, also no interference from your uh, ESC. So lots of features on this thing. I found this thing installed uh, just super awesome. I mean, really easy to get it in there. Um, um, and uh, I just like the zip ties, man. I like the zip tie installation because I don't have to worry about, um, you know, putting glue on my motor or wrapping it around the outside or blocking any of the cooling. You can see those cooling ports are, you know, way, way open. So there's nothing that's going to get blocked. And uh, uh, it's just a super, super awesome burner. So anyway, guys, once again, uh, thanks for watching this uh, channel. Check these, uh, check these burners out once again at kmrcmodel.com. Again, links below. Thanks for watching the channel. We're going to have more videos of these to come. Check the upper right-hand corner of the screen for associated videos with the uh, uh, KMRC model uh, burners. 
And uh, please like and subscribe to the channel, guys. If you like the content, I got more of this stuff coming. So once again, like and subscribe, hit the notification bell. And uh, as always, guys, we'll see you all next time.